Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for coming today. I am uh, overjoyed that God has planned this for us. And I'm really just honored to be your MC for the FSGM. So the Sisters of St. Francis of the Martyr St. George this is actually the anniversary of our foundress, Mother and Salma, uh, the anniversary of her death today. So it's a great day of grace for... Yes. Sorry, I'm getting some feedback. I'm going to pause for a second. Okay. Um, so I um, am going to let you get to know who we are by kicking this off with a brief intro video uh, to let you see the Sisters of St. Francis of the Martyr St. George um, in ways that we really can't capture via Zoom. So here we are, founded by Mother and Salma in 1869. Let me go ahead and share my screen so that you can see. Okay, if I could find it. Let's see where it's at. <laughs> That's not good. I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to click on this one and I'm going to go share. It might look funny for a second. There we go. Okay, there it is. Welcome to St. Francis Convent of the Franciscan Sisters of the Martyr St. George. We're so happy to welcome you today uh, to get a little glimpse of our life and to share in our Franciscan joy. As a Franciscan community, we follow St. Francis and his great love of simplicity, humility, poverty, perfect joy, uh, and his great love of Jesus Christ, first and foremost. Like people like to boil him down to animals and tree hugging, but really it's all about the crib, the cross, and the Eucharist. So as a Franciscan congregation, our goal is to help people know the merciful love of Jesus who comes to meet us in the very tangible places of our lives. My name is Sister Carolyn. I'm a vocation director for our community. Uh, we are located in Alton, Illinois, just over the river from St. Louis. You can check us out on the web, www.altonfranciscans.org. Shoot me an email, vocations at altonfranciscans.org, and I'd love to hear more about your journey and how the Lord is drawing you to open your heart to his call. God bless you, and may the sacred heart of Jesus be your true refuge. stationed in the Diocese of Springfield, but it says we pray for our Holy Father and the bishops in whose diocese our sisters serve. So here's our bishop, Bishop Proprocki, and obviously Pope Francis. Um, and so we have captured here each of the bis bishops in whose diocese we currently serve. And this, this is just the American province and then our mission.
Welcome to St. Francis Daycare. I'm Sister Mary Elizabeth, and my apostolate right now is to take care of the babies, three months to about nine months, and we're in the St. Therese room three. Okay, so you might be wondering, do we ever get to see our families? Well, actually, our families often come to visit us. This is Sister Talitha and her family hanging out here. So this is Sister Christina. Hi, Sister. Hi, and my mom came. <laughs> and this is Sister Rosalinda and Sister Christina's mom. Hello. <laughs> so this sister, in three words, can you describe how being a sister has been for you? Oh, as a sister, I've been very happy. <laughs> Beautiful. Or how old were you when you entered? Probably 23, 24. And how old are you now, may I ask you? 85. 85. Sister, look at the joy is still real. <laughs> Thank you so much, sister. With that, we just want to welcome onto our screen next, Mother Mediatrics. And Mother Mediatrics, as we've gotten just a quick taste of who we are as the Sisters of St. Francis of the Martyr St. George via video, can you tell us in person um, about our worldwide congregation and about our charism? Yes, I'd be happy to, Sister Bernadette. Thanks for having me on Behind the Veil. And thanks for that great video, Sister Bernadette. That was wonderful. And that was actually mainly uh, pictures from Alton, right? So we have uh, sisters all over, mainly in the Midwest, but in other parts of the United States. And Sister Bernadette wanted me to share where um, our mission of sisters reaches throughout the world. So the good work that God started in Mother and Selma went to Japan and the United States in the 1920s. Uh, we went to Brazil in 1972, but before that, we went to Indonesia in 1932. Uh, we went to Albania in 2001. Uh, we have a mission in Italy in 2005, and our most recent mission is in Cuba, and that was opened in 2011. Uh, our mission and charism is to make Christ's merciful love visible in our service. And we express that charism in a diverse apostolate. You saw sisters doing all sorts of things uh, in the Alton convent. And you're gonna learn more about that in the coming hour. But essentially we're sent to the poor and needy of every condition. And so we try to be attentive to where God is calling us and through the signs of the times that he's showing us. And it's our special call and imitation of mother and Selma to be simply ready in obedience. Thanks for your time, and I hope you enjoy the Behind the Veil. Mother, thank you so very much uh, for sharing with us about our province and our worldwide congregation. Um, so as you heard, we are in many different countries, right? So the Lord planted the seed in Mother and Salma in Germany, a little town of Tuna, Germany, and he has spread us and sent us all over the world. So he even though we're not going to go all over the world today, we are going to go all over our province. Um, we're actually going to start by heading up to Rockford, Illinois. And there, you're going to see our sisters who serve in healthcare. So if I can have uh, Sister Simona, are you, um, are you on Zoom right now? Yes, I am. Could you hear me? Lovely. Sister Simona, can you tell us, first of all, introduce yourself, who you are, where you are, and how you make the merciful love of Christ visible? Okay. Good morning. Afternoon, I should say. I'm Sister Simona. I'm, I work in pastoral care at OSF St. Anthony's in Rockford, Illinois. 
And pastoral care is one of the most interesting jobs. Yeah, you go to people's rooms and you're the person that sits down to with the person and the patient and you say, how are you doing? Get anything you'd like to talk about? Could I pray with you? And it's amazing how many people open their heart to me and share who they are and what they're doing in their lives. They may um, not talk to anyone about anything. And I've had many people look at me and go, you know, I don't even know why I'm telling you this. <laughs> and you have to laugh because it's like, it's, um, it's a free conversation with no strings attached. And it's a, a great way to help people to know who they are and where they're going in their lives. So it's, it's a very blessed apostolate. Beautiful. Sister Simona, thank you for sharing. And I'm going to go ahead and allow our sisters uh, who I see next to you to introduce themselves and um, allow them some time also to share their apostolate and again, how they uniquely make the merciful love of Christ visible. So good afternoon, everybody. I'm Sister John Mary, and uh, my role is as the Director of Mission Services for the Northern Region of OSF Healthcare. So primarily what I do is try to build up and maintain and strengthen a Catholic culture within the healthcare system. So I do that primarily by visiting four hospitals that we have in the Northern region. And uh, I visit mission partners uh, pretty regularly and just kind of uh, talk to them, uh, see how they're doing. I, I kind of do a similar thing that Sister Simona does with the patients, but I'm more focused on providing that for the employees and we refer to them as our mission partners and uh, to try to help to uh, evangelize basically within, within the healthcare system. Um, and that includes providing opportunities for prayer, um, maybe having opportunities for adoration or Eucharistic processions, and then also just meeting one-on-one -on -one with mission partners, especially if they're having a difficult time or feeling burned out, there's a space where they can come to me and just sort of express what's on their hearts or what they've been experiencing and to provide some consolation in that way. And then um, we also do that as a whole in the ministry um, by providing what's called mission integration. And so we try to help our, our mission partners understand what the mission of Catholic healthcare is, particularly within our uh, Franciscan spirituality and help them to live it out on a daily basis. So that's kind of what I do and sister will share hers next. All right, uh, good afternoon. My name is Sister Rose Thomas. Uh, I'm a nurse. I work, um, up here in Rockford as well at, um, I'm working in the cancer center right now, so working with oncology patients. Um, and that's been a really beautiful experience for me. I've been doing that for about a year now. Um, and it's just, I, I was actually a nurse before I entered the convent. And so now to be able to uh, be working as a nurse, but as a sister as well, has been really an amazing uh, experience for me. Um, just to bring Christ to the patients, but also for them to bring him to me. Like I see, I see him in the patients that I encounter every day. Um, and especially working in cancer care, um, our patients are kind of at a vulnerable place in their lives. Um, and it's just been neat to kind of walk that journey with them um, as they kind of come back every week for their treatments, um, just to kind of build those relationships um, and to hopefully share Christ with them. Um, and then we have, we work in, in nursing in a variety of different areas. So up here in Rockford, um, I have another sister that works in hospice care. And then uh, we have some sisters in the Peoria area as well that are in nursing and other various areas of healthcare, uh, biomedical engineering and um, different, different areas of uh, nursing down there as well. So that's kind of what we do. Sister Simona and Sister John Mary and Sister Rose Thomas, it was beautiful to see you. I hope to see you in person soon. Um, and especially to hear, <laughs> especially <laughs> to hear how, how, how Sister Rose will just take it on. <laughs> how God is touching hearts um, for you. So thank you for being uh, so available to God's people in Rockford. And let me tell you, uh, all you women who are listening, if you want to have a peaceful encounter, Come to the sisters in Rockford. They have welcomed me for four days this past year, and I walked away like I was on a two-week retreat. So thank you, sisters, <laughs> um, for being so gracious and for really making Christ's merciful and visible there. It was evident to me. Okay, so next, we heard a little bit about our sisters who work in healthcare. 
we're now going to go to Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, where you're going to get to meet our sisters who particularly are serving the Lord's priests. Hi, my name is Sister Joan. Um, I've been here in Lincoln, Nebraska for four years, and I serve with two other sisters at the priest retirement home called Bonicum House, which is named after the first bishop of Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, we have room for 12 priests here, and currently we have nine. And the basic, you know, practical thing that we do for them is housekeeping and laundry, uh, prepare the meals and care for the sacristy, but we do so much more than that. Like what we really do is we love our priests. We pray for them and we accompany them because they are going through the experience of the final years of their life. They're growing older and we're helping them to accept that and to accept the weakening of health, the weakening of their strength, the loss of their independence and letting go of many things that were very important to them before. And uh, in that way, when the time comes, they can be ready to die. And if possible, we are there right up to their very last breath. And so the work we do here is a work of gratitude. Um, it's for their many years of service in the priesthood, they've given their lives to the church. And so we wanna in turn then give our lives to serve them and in that way to serve Christ. Um, that we, you know, we're, we're carrying on the charism that St. Francis himself had because he loved priests. He, he had a great reverence and respect for the priests of his time, even in their human weakness, even when that became very apparent, but he always showed them that reverence and respect. And so we want to show them that and to show them that very personal love that God has for them. And really they give us so much more than we ever give to them in showing us Christ, so. We'll pass you to Sister Mary Frances. Okay, so So I'm kind of the sister in transition at the moment. I spent my last four years at our mother house in Alton working in the lab. Um, and then right now I'm helping with what we call our summer schedule. So Sister Mary Frances and I are not actually permanent sisters at Bonacum. <laughs> Um, we are covering for the two sisters who right, went on retreat and vacation. And right now one is in Idaho and one is in New York visiting their families. And then I will be going back for retreat pretty soon. But then I will be transitioning to this next year. I'm gonna be going back to Atchison, Kansas to Benedictine College where I will be completing my education certification and using that with my biology degree to teach uh, either middle school or high school eventually, so. I don't know if we have any Ravens out there, but go Ravens. <laughs> um, and then I actually, um, as sister said, I'm here filling in for the day. Um, and in for the next few weeks or so, um, but it was interesting as I was thinking about what to say today, cause sister Bernadette was like, well, you know, how do you make the love of the merciful love of Christ visible? And I thought, you know, it's beautiful because we go to these summer schedules. We help out our sisters, um, who, you know, would like to see their family who needs some renewal, who, who would like to go on retreat. Um, my regular job is I'm a high school math teacher, um, but yet I still get to come here to enjoy the priests here, um, to serve them and to enter into that form of merciful love. Um, you know, here it, it looks different. Um, here we're accompanying them through those end stages of life. We're accompanying them in the day-to-day -day reality of, of what they live. Um, in my high school setting, I am accompanying freshmen through the growing pains of what it means to be a high school student. My seniors, um, I accompany them through kind of like that, those end days of, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be an adult soon. Um, and everything in between from, you know, not understanding a topic to um, some of the bigger questions of life. Um, and, and as I reflected this morning, I was like, you know, what, what can I say? What does it mean to make Christ's merciful love visible? And um, I always go back to this quote that I found from Pope Francis one time, which was actually, probably the most brilliant thing I've ever read. Um, he was talking to a group of priests about the sacrament of confession. He said, God's mercy, like to make mercy visible is to love brokenness to the point of healing. Um, and for me, wherever we go, the, the crazy thing is, you know, we as human beings, we're all broken in some way, um, differently, of course, but um, that's what we do as Franciscans, in particular, our community. Um, we meet the brokenness of man and we love it right there and we accompany them to that point of healing in whatever way that looks. 
Thank you so much, Sister Mary Frances, Sister Carol Marie, and Sister Joan. It is such a tease to see you through Zoom right now. So yeah. I look forward to seeing you in person. <laughs> Oh, but again, it is awesome also to hear uh, truly how the charism of Francis and the charism of Mother and Salma are being so particularly uh, continued and given through for each of you. So thanks for being sent right where you are today and uh, hopefully see you tomorrow. No, <laughs> no what? Okay, so we now, Sister Mary Francis, um, she mentioned that during the school year, her apostle is to be a teacher, so she teaches math. We're actually gonna head to Champaign, Illinois, where we will get to, you get to meet our sister, Bridget. Sister Bridget, hello. Hello. My name is Bridget, Ooh, feedback. Uh, and I am a principal actually at uh, the high school of St. Thomas More here in Champaign, Illinois. And as the sisters have mentioned already, we do have various different apostolates and one of them is education. So we have education all the way from uh, daycare which is a, a form of education, very much so. So we own a daycare center and we have students from six months old in that center, all the way up to teaching in the university. We have a few sisters who teach at different universities. Um, and so we have sisters teaching in Illinois, Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Ohio. And we teach everything in between and we teach all subjects. Um, and really what we're teaching is the merciful love of Christ through our content area. As a teacher, I taught history and uh, students would often kind of wonder if I could actually teach history when they walked in as a sister, but uh, found out very quickly how, how easily that actually came to me, but also mixed into what their, what their life was, um, what their life and walk with the Lord is like. And so we, uh, yeah, we do have sisters who teach elementary school, high school, college, university, um, and just very various different locations across Illinois and then um, in Kansas, Nebraska, Oklahoma, and Ohio. Mr. Bridget, thank you. Um, and it was lovely to see you not too long ago. And it's fun to also see that God, not only does he call us to teach uh, in the classrooms, but obviously in your administrative position there as a principal. So thanks for all you do. <laughs> the Lord really, he's the only one who knows everything, right? Um, so <laughs> thank you for making the, the Lord's sacred heart visible to those students here. So as we, as you can tell, uh, the Lord has called us to many, many ways, different varieties of apostolates. And um, life is really an adventure. You never know where the Lord is going to send you. And yet, even though there is um, such a surprise in where you're sent, he is constant, right? And our community is constant. So uh, our refuge really is the heart of Christ. And from his heart, um, we are capable only through him, with him, and in him of being sent to all these various places. Um, and, and what a joy it is. So we are now going to uh, share with you a little video of our nursing home. So we have a Mother of Good Counsel home is the name of it in St. Louis, Missouri. And um, Sister Katerina, Sister uh, Juliana, and um, several of our other sisters, several of them are, are starring in their little video they made for me. Um, three minutes just to give you a little taste of how we minister to the elderly. And so let me go ahead and share my screen with you one more time. So you'll hear the sister mentioned by name and then um, get to see a view of several other sisters. Here we go. Hello, my name is Sister Katerina, and I'm a nursing supervisor here at the home. And one of the many reasons that I do love the home so much is just the community spirit that we have at the home here um, among our sisters and the unity that we feel as our mission partners, um, our staff that work together here. There's a lot of unity um, that is experienced at being at the home because everything is integrated here. We have our prayer life here together. Um, there's that foundation of coming together uh, at the Mass and celebrating the Eucharist. And then throughout the day, we have those times that we return to the chapel together to pray for um, just all the needs that are entrusted to us, but then also being able to go out and care together for the residents. And just seeing how 
they really experience that presence of God um, through us. But in so many ways, every day I experience uh, Christ being shown to me. Every day, especially in the work of nursing and in healthcare, we just experience Jesus so tangibly. And you're always involved in works of mercy. You just can't miss them. Um, Whatever the needs of the church are, the signs of the time, that's what we do. We branch out wherever there is a need in the church. And when you come to the home, it translates into what is the need in the home. Uh, currently, Sister Anselm is the administrator. We have Sister Luca, who's the administrator assistant. We have Sister Paul in the chapel. Sister Jessica keeps the grounds. I'm in activities. Sister Cecilia is also in activities. And then you have Sister Bernard that are doing various things including pastoral care, Sister Clarita's in uh, finance, and Sister Jacoba is the mom, she takes care of us. Sister Marstella, who's uh, currently taking care of supplies, and Sister Peter Marie, who's in marketing. You know, regardless of what we do or where we're at, uh, the, the gift of being a sister is one that should never stay to us. Uh, the gift of religious life is for the church. It is not for oneself. You don't live it for yourself. Yes, there is definite graces and blessings. And when God has called you to this life, it is it is beautiful. It is truly beautiful. Not that it doesn't have its challenges, but it truly is beautiful. But when you are able to grow in that relationship and intimacy with your spouse, and then together you walk out those doors, and you meet, and you're accompanying all these people on their journey final steps of their life. We are the last people that they have contact with before they see God face to face. All right. Um, so how beautiful it is to see our mother of good counsel home and oops, yes, I am on and uh, the way that our sisters are generously giving of themselves. I, I almost tear up when I watch that video, especially when you hear that um, those, those sisters really are sometimes the last people, right? That they, they will get to see before they see God face to face. What an honor, what a great, great mission. So I don't know about you, but about this time, if I was you, I think I'd be wondering, okay, so we see where they are sent, but how did they begin? How did they become a sister of St. Francis of the Martyr St. George? So I have invited our, our sisters who are in formation, our, their formators, as well as the novices and postulants to join us today. So if we can have our novitiates, uh, please come and introduce yourself. And you can take it from here. Hello, everybody. I'm Sister Mariela. I am the postulant director for our community. And I walk with or form our young sisters in their first year of being the Sisters of St. Francis of the Martyr St. George. So they keep me on my toes, that's for sure. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. And I really enjoy um, being able to teach them about our way of life and introduce them to our charism. My name is Sister Alexandra and I am the novice director for our community. And I have the honor and privilege of preparing the young women to consecrate themselves to God through the vows of obedience. Um, and through that consecration, it's a communion of love so that we can go out to the world and bring his merciful love to the world and also um, to upbuild the church. Thank you, <laughs> Sister Mariela and Sister Alexandra. And now if we can have our novices. Hello, sisters. Hello. Hello. <laughs> feel free to come on and introduce yourselves. We're a rowdy bunch. Uh, my name is Sister Elizabeth Grace. I am a second year novice. I'm Sister Veronica. I'm a first year novice. I'm Sister Bethany. I'm a first year novice as well. Sisters, thank you for joining us. So I hope you don't mind. I'm going to just like put you on the spot here. Uh, so Sister Elizabeth Grace, could you capture in a moment, what does it mean to be an FSGM? That is a Sister of St. Francis of the Martyr St. George. Yes. Um, I know Mother Mediatrix had mentioned it, but 
um, it bears repeating that we have a special call uh, handed down to us from our founders, mother and Selma to be simply ready in loving obedience to whatever God asks of us through the church and specifically through our congregation. Um, the source of our strength through this comes from our spirituality and that is to look upon him whom we have pierced. Um, we see the symbol for this as his sacred heart and um, by gazing upon his heart, uh, both in our communal prayer, our personal prayer, and most especially in the sacrifice of the mass where we receive his sacred heart in the Eucharist, um, we then can go out to live our charism. So you've heard before, our charism is to make God's merciful love visible in the world. Um, so we basically, the, the more and more we are receptive and seek to open ourselves to receiving his overwhelming personal spousal love for each one of us, um, the, the greater our receptivity, the greater our generosity. So um, our apostolate springs from that receptivity. And our apostolate is, um, looks like many different things, like we, we do teaching, healthcare, et cetera. Um, but at the heart of it all is that when we work with others, when we serve others, and when we live with our own sisters, it's Christ that we want them to see in us and to be loved through us. Sister, thank you so much. And you are right on. <laughs> Sister <laughs> Veronica, can I ask you, uh, what drew you to say yes to being an FSGM? Yes, well, um, I met the sisters while studying at Francine University of Steubenville. Mm -hmm. I went to nursing school with two of them. Sister Katerina was just in that video, dressed in white. Um, she's at the Mother of Good Counsel home right now. So I went to school with her and another sister here in Alton. Um, what attracted me to the sisters was their Franciscan joy and their authenticity. And I think just how unashamedly they loved the Lord that really drew me in. When I came to visit, I was really edified by the sisters balance between work and prayer and how they made both a priority. Um, I think for me, the biggest thing that the biggest obstacle that got in the way of saying yes was definitely myself. Um, I think I've fought it for a long time against this. Um, but really, in this through the silence of prayer, Jesus was teaching me that first, I think that I had the charism merciful love within me and then I also um, that that charism was within me before I even came to visit um, it had been building over a long period of time um, that came I think mostly through prayer so I would recommend that to anyone discerning out there you gotta pray <laughs> you can't just visit places <laughs> Um, I think in that process too realizing um, that I had that charism but also seeing that I could be a gift to Jesus, that I could be a gift to my community, a gift to the church. And I'm not saying that that was easy or that it is easy now, but there's a lot of peace and joy with saying yes to him as an FSGM. So yeah, it's great. Sister, it is great. I'm so <laughs> glad you said yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. All right, Sister Bethany Marie, would you be willing to tell us um, how does one become an FSGM? So like, the practical steps. So the first step when someone starts feeling called to religious life is really just like like you both said, it's like to enter deeper into prayer and to begin asking um, the Lord, what are you asking of me specifically? And so um, that, that starts with an encounter with him that has to happen in prayer. And so as you begin to continue hearing the Lord calling you, um, asking him, where is he leading you? And so for us, Us, we, we knew that the Lord was leading. He has its own charism, which was specific to it and specific to its identity as a community and its, um, its own spirituality. And so um, I know for me, like I saw in many ways where that charism had already been written on my heart and I just had to um, to come to know it deeper and I'm still coming to know what that means more deeply. And so um, so once you you see like yourself drawn to like a specific community and and um, and feel called to that specific place, reaching out to the sisters, going to visit them and talking to the vocation director will then lead you to um, the formal steps of application and acceptance into the community. And then when that happens, you would become a postulant. So I would like to introduce you to our postulant. <laughs> 
I'm Stacy. I'm Ginny. I'm Amber. I'm Claire. So we are the the Postlets, the sisters. And so we're first year sisters and kind of like Sister Veronica talked about, um, the first year is all about learning that balance between prayer and work and formation. So a little bit about what we do is we get up and we pray all of our prayers at the community and do the order of the day. But also in the morning, something unique to us is we go out and work in our apostolates. So some of us have worked in the hospital this last year in the daycare um, and also as teachers. And then in the afternoon, we come back and we have time for spiritual reading, um, time for human formation, time for, and we have class and we get to learn um, just about our life and basic theology. And then we also just get to, to live our life every day with the sisters. And then after Pashan, the year is over, we'll be received as novices, like our first year novices here. And so um, <laughs> we'll receive the habit and the veil and the religious name. So, uh, please say the name Sister Georgiana after Blessed Sister Georgiana Rothery. I'll be receiving the name Sister Sana Maria after Blessed Stanley Rother. I'll be taking the name Sister Magdalena after Mary Magdalene. And I'll be uh, receiving the name Sister Mary Paul after St. Paul. And so back, so after we received as novices, we'll go back to Sister Bethany Marie. Novice and it, your first year of novitiate is called a canonical year, where you're entering deeper into a life of prayer, into the spirituality of your community, and um, just learning more what it means to be a sister. And then the second year of novitiate, which we are now entering into, we will be going on mission, and it's more of a time of apostolic experience, and um, also just like a testing of one's vocation to see uh, if they if you're able to live the life fully, um, the life that you'll be living once you make vows. Um, so then we have Sister Elizabeth Grace, who will be making first vows in August. So, <laughs> so she's at the end of her of her second year of novitiate. Um, after that, when you make first vows, then you enter um, a period called juniorate, where you are renewing your vows every year in preparation for the time when you will finally profess your vows um, and then become a final profession sister and a full member of our community. <laughs> Sisters, what a joy. Thank you for making our day. You never fail. <laughs> Um, so what, what a great gift to see, uh, just that God, he takes us where we're at, right? He, he invites us knowing our personal history. He is not afraid of our history. He is not afraid of, um, the past, the present or the future. And he gives us, uh, permission to trust that he knows who he has chosen. Doesn't he, right? He knows who he has chosen. And yet our confidence, um, is not, it's not in our strength, but it is in his choice. Uh, so what a beautiful renewal it is just to hear again um, the, the steps that we all went through. And um, Sister Mariela, thanks for showing off your ring. All right, my turn. No, <laughs> Sister Rosalinda. Oh my goodness. So actually, speaking of Sister Rosalinda, um, we have been able to hear from so many of our sisters today. And believe me, like if you loved today, you ought to meet the rest of us, okay? It is such a gift belong to the Sisters of St. Francis of the Martyr St. George, and um, each, each sister has a unique story, a unique history, and a unique uh, charism within our charism of merciful love. The Lord is building something, and um, the, the surprise is that you say yes, and yet he, um, he, your strength lies in him, right? He knows where he's going to send you and how he's going to mold you through it all. Um, so we would like to now, um, I believe Dawn is going to lead us um, in a little session of Q&A, if I'm not mistaken. Otherwise, I have some great questions that have been submitted for us. And Sister Rosalinda, I'm going to invite you to the screen for this, for this time. Wonderful. Yes. So thank you for your beautiful sharing of your life and the joy. People are mentioning a lot about your joy and your love. Um, the questions that we got from discerners, I think you have some of them. The first question they were asking is of, of your spirituality. Like what exactly is your spirituality? Then they asked about the martyr St. George, you know, what does he have to do with things? So I don't know if you want to kind of just flesh that out a little bit more than you already have. All right. So you know what? I think I'm going to answer two questions and I'm going to ask you to particularly talk on being simply ready because so the, the short answer is, um, so what is our spirituality? You've heard um, throughout this presentation, throughout many of the sisters' comments that about the sacred heart of Jesus, right? And so Mother and Selma, um, she encountered the sacred heart of Jesus 
and lived from his refuge. And it is in looking upon his pierced heart that we come to receive his merciful love. And then what is, what is this ask of us? To love as he has loved us. Our mission is to be open to receive the love that he wants to give to the world and then to go out and do that, starting with the sister right next to you. <laughs> um, and so that's our charism. And we, we kind of try to capture it in the image of his pierced and sacred heart right behind us and in the phrase, making the merciful love of Christ visible. And yet you really can't capture a spirituality. It is a mystery that is lived and it's something that's inside of us. We didn't do this to ourselves. The Lord has, has done this into our hearts. And so uh, really life, this life is, a, is an adventure. Um, and we get to see the, the spirituality, the charism, the mystery of this call come to life every day. Um, the Martyr of St. George Peace. So Mother uh, and Salma, in her devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, naturally wanted to be the Sisters of St. Francis of the Sacred Heart. But poverty is our theme here because someone already stole the name. So um, we rejoice with St. Francis in God's, in God's providence. He, uh, the Holy See wrote back to the community and said, please take the name of the parish that you are at. We happened, it looks like uh, to us, right? That we, we happened to be at the Martyr of St. George Parish. And yet, lo and behold, the Martyr of St. George um, was a favorite of St. Francis and he was baptized at the Martyr of St. George Church. So the Lord only knows yet how that, that friendship with St. George will unfold in our future. So Sister Rosalinda, could you share with us a little bit more um, having to do with our spirituality on mother's specific gift, mother and someone's specific gift, being simply ready. Simply yeah. ready, yes. Um, well, first of all, I remember my first experience of, of entering that simply ready was, was hearing that bell first thing in the morning at 4.35 a.m. and jumping out of the bed and coming to the door <laughs> and the superior at the end, our formator, our postulant director saying, all for the greater honor of God. And we all resoundingly said, and for the salvation of our souls. And so um, I think that simply being ready starts with our day of just waking up and every day going out to, to make his merciful love visible. Um, I think then, you know, as we go through formation, you know, simply ready might be Sister, can you come with me to help me mop this, <laughs> mop this room over here? Or can you help me do the dishes? Or can you um, go and drop this off somewhere? Um, and I think all of those little um, responses of being simply ready um, helps you get ready for the big ones, right? <laughs> and I remember one time uh, as a postulant, uh, my formator, Sister Martin came and she said, now, Mother Ingeborg, she wants you to go with her. And I thought, oh, where am I going to go? But I was simply ready. And it was great because what Mother wanted to do is she wanted to go to the projects and um, find a person that needed a television. So we got to go and we found um, a person that was in need. And then we found some children. She had some extra stuffed animals and candy. And so, so simply ready meant going on this fun trip with mother and being able to do something like that for, for the poor. So that was really cool. And then simply ready meant um, mother asking me to go back to school to, to do nursing. So um, saying yes, when actually I wanted to be a teacher. <laughs> so I, had, I, was, I was in nursing school at Franciscan University of Steubenville and I had completed two years but mother wanted me to go back to school when secretly I only went to nursing school to because as a teacher, you didn't make as much money. <laughs> so, so, so I went to nursing school and I finished my degree. But I love, love nursing. So I love doing that. And then I went to our nursing home. So you met some of our sisters from Mother of Good Council Home. So I went there and I took the place of all different areas, you know, uh, working wherever I was asked to work. Um, sometimes it meant I, I had these gifts I didn't even, even know I had, like playing the organ when I only had one year of, of piano lessons or doing graphic design, you know, things I never thought that I would ever do in the convent, you know. Um, and so I think the important thing is to really have that heart 
um, an expectant heart to do God's will, just like a ready, open heart to do that. And when we do that then, and doing all these little yeses and being simply ready in the small things, it helps us be ready to do the big things. Like when mother comes and says, I wanna send you back to school to get your masters. And then guess what? I got to do my dream job, which was to teach and to actually teach nursing. So I got like the best combo of, of doing nursing, but also teaching nursing at a college of nursing and then getting cancer and saying yes to cancer um, and then getting cancer again <laughs> and saying yes to cancer again, being simply ready and in, in all of the parts of our life that, that come to us. And then, um, and then after that, in the middle of my year, just this year, I got a call in like literally week nine of college um, to uh, come and be the superior here at St. Francis Convent and just say yes, be simply ready. And so, um, but our, you know, so now I get to, I get the joy of, of serving our sisters and being here in Alton. And they always joke that I have not just FOMO, which is fear of missing out, but I have FOMA, which is fear of missing anything. <laughs> and so now I'm so now I'm in Alton where I'm able to to be here and serve our sisters. And so I'm very joyful and, and very blessed to be able to do that. So we are so blessed to have her. Thank you, Sister Rosalinda. Wow, that's amazing. I love that so that we don't miss out, we want to make sure we get this poll in. Um, so we have a poll for everybody. If you're a discerner, you have a question. And if you're just curious about consecrated life, we have a question for you too. So I'm going to launch the poll. Should just take you a moment to click on that answer that ap applies um, and give the Sisters of St. Francis of Martyr St. George a little more information and, and feedback about this hour. So glad that I finally know about the name and understand more about that. <laughs> totally confused for a while. Um, and what a blessing to be able to hear from so many, some from some of the um, elder sisters to the novices, the postulants, mother mediatrics. I mean, what a blessing this has been. I, I feel like we've learned a lot. So, so far we're doing, a, everybody's doing a great job. Keep clicking another few seconds and then we'll end the poll. All right. Yes, and remember everybody, there will be time to talk with these sisters at the end of the day. Um, so just one hour from now, we'll have the discerners hour after this last community of the Passionist Nuns. So stay tuned. Thank you, sisters. Yes. Thank you so, for having yeah. us. What a joy. Great to see you, Rhonda and Don and Elizabeth. I know you're there too. God bless you all. And ladies, thank you for um, giving up your time to, to be with us today. We all very much enjoyed this. This was a great surprise for us. Thank you. Simply uh, ready. Simply ready to do this. <laughs> you see from the poll, sisters, that um, there are 58% of those who are discerning want to know more about you, which is amazing. And those who are curious about consecrated life feel like they understand more about this life because of what you presented. So thank you so much for, um, for being with us and sac all the sacrifices that were made to make this so amazing for all of us. And we felt it and, and we felt the joy and the love. I know everybody did, right? Round of applause, little <laughs> heart, something everybody wants to give a reaction. It was so beautiful. Um, and we'll uh, let everybody know on Monday um, how you can get in touch with the, the sisters if you uh, want to um, talk more with them. All right, so uh, now we go back to Dawn for the um, time for reflection and prayer. God bless you, sisters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We've had a lot of hours. Stay tuned, everyone. We're, we're hanging in there. We're going to say another prayer and just recollect ourselves with the Lord and just let the Lord show us anything that he wants us to take with, with us after that hour we just had. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Give us your love and your peace. and your heart of wisdom and reflection as we walk through that hour with the sisters of St. Francis of the Martyr St. George. 
Come Holy Spirit. We ask for you to highlight anything that is left with us, um, be it the joy, new way of seeing the sacred heart of the Lord Jesus, spirituality of the Franciscans, the, the love they share with one another, the community life they live. What is it, Lord, that you want us to rest in for a minute? Come Holy Spirit and show that to us. We walk through the lives of their apostolate and see those images of the various places we went, the health care for the priests, the little babies, for the dying, many ways that this community serves. Any words, any words that a sister spoke that really resonated with your heart? What well, might that be? We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see the beauty of another religious community, another form of consecrated life that's out there that exists. Help us in our journey of discerning your will to be able to hear the call that you have for each of us. And if there's any action items after this day that you might desire of us, that we might make those actions possible, be it stepping up our prayer life, be it visiting a community or contacting the consecrated virgin, whatever it is from this day, we just ask for that grace to see that. We pray all glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. St. Francis and St. George, pray for us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.